Hello everyone, this is Pastor Maria Martinez from Jesus Christ the Door Open. I'm excited today to share with you the good news of His kingdom, of His powerful word. It's so amazing to be able to hear God's voice and understand through His Holy Spirit the message He has for us and the world. And today we're going to be reading out of the 1 Corinthians 13, verse 13. That is the word he has for us. He wants us to walk in that faith, that hope and love. But I want to call this message and this teaching faith in love. Because when you have faith in the beginning and love, you can automatically receive hope right in between. So let's read out of his word. And it says in Jesus name, and now there remain faith which means abiding and trusting God in his promises, hope, confidence, confidence, expecting that eternal salvation and love, which is unselfish love for others growing out of, out of God's love. So powerful that he wants us to walk by faith not by sight. He wants us to walk in the agape love, the love that we receive from the father, which is love. God is love. He is so much love that our mind does not have the ability, the capacity to understand how much love. You know, God at the cross said, God, forgive them. Father, forgive them. They do not know what they do. He had so much love that the word says that he gave himself for us, that he gave himself so we can have eternal life. And it's so important for us to know that God wants us not to be troubled. He understands. He was here on earth, just like us, and he went through trials and situations. And in John chapter 14, verse one, the Lord Jesus spoke these words and he said, do not let your heart be troubled, which means afraid. Do not be a coward. Another translation says in the Amplified, but believe, be confident in God and trust him. Have faith, hold on to it. See, we all have a measure of faith that the Lord put in us since we were formed in our mother's womb. We all have faith. Even people that say, I don't believe God exists. I don't believe God really loves me. I don't believe God hears me. But when the situation comes to their life, immediately out of their spirit, they say, oh, God, help me. It comes out naturally because God injected a measure of faith in all of us. You know, something that his word says, he says that faith is in Hebrews chapter 11, verse one, it's the assurance of the things hoped for. And it's the evidence of the things not seen. We have to understand that we cannot see faith. We have to speak faith. We have to walk in faith. We cannot see it. We cannot hear it. We have to activate it and provoke it when we call on to God. That is how the faith is provoked and released from our spirit when we call on to God because of a situation in our life. As soon as we say, oh, Father, who art in heaven, please let your kingdom come. Right there, the faith is released and we start speaking to him in a relationship. You know, we all want to please God. We all want to please God. And that is in Hebrews 11, chapter 11, verse six, it says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him for whoever comes to God must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who diligently seek him. We need to understand that if we want to please God, we have to believe he truly exists every single day, every single moment of our life, God exists. He doesn't go away. He's right there, ready to listen to us, ready to have a relationship with us. And when we lose that faith, because it depends on us. We have self-control. When we say, you know what? I'm not going to God. I'm just going to do it my way. I'm gonna do it according to my thoughts. And his word says in Isaiah 
chapter 55 and verse 8 and 9, that God's thoughts are not our thoughts, and our thoughts are not God's thoughts, because His thoughts are higher than all the heavens. So it's important to understand that we have to walk in God's faith, in God's love. You know, there's a story in the Bible, in the book of Matthew chapter 8, and I want to speak about it because, you know, Jesus said these words. He says, I have not found faith like I have found faith in this man. And I said, wow, Holy Spirit, I want to walk in that faith in love to live that abundant life that God died for me to have. John chapter 10 says that the enemy came to steal, kill, and destroy. It is the enemy that comes and wants to do that. But we have abundant life when we go to Jesus, when we pray. There is power in prayer, in the relationship with Jesus, in the relationship with His Holy Spirit. And the book of Matthew chapter 8 talks about this centurion who came to Jesus and asked him for prayer. And he said in verse 6, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed with intense and terrible tormenting pain. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. Wow. But the centurion replied to him, Lord, I am not worthy to have you to come under my roof. And all I need you to do is say the word and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man, a man that subjects to authority of a higher rank with soldiers that subject to me. And I say to them, go and they go and to the other come and they come and to my slave do this. And he does it. So when Jesus heard this, he was amazed. And he said to those who were following him, I tell you truthfully, I have not found such great faith as this with anyone in Israel. I say to you that many Gentiles will come from East and from West and will sit down to feast at the table and enjoy God's promises with Abraham, Isaac and Jacob and in the kingdom of heaven because they have accepted me as savior. So we see here that the centurion had so much faith that he said to Jesus, Jesus, I understand. I have wisdom. I have knowledge through my personal experience. I also am a man of authority. You know, I have people working for me and I tell them what to do and they do it. And I know Jesus that you are a man of authority. I know that you are God of authority. I understand that if you just send the word by faith with love, of healing your neighbor, it's going to happen. See, it's faith not only for the material things or things that are comfortable for us. It is faith where we're going to see the supernatural when we release the faith to think to do things that make God happy in his heart, which is in reality the blessing of obeying his commandments. What is God's commandment? Matthew 22, verse 37 says, I want you to love the father. I want you to love God with all your mind, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. But I also want you to love your neighbor. That's anybody around you, family, friends, everybody, even enemies that come against you, anybody. He says, I want you to love your neighbor as you love yourself. But we cannot do that if we don't receive by faith God's love. It is faith with love. Faith in God that he will do justice, that he will open the door where we have to go. And I love this example of his word where he says, you know, I'm amazed. Jesus says, I am amazed to see this man has 
so much faith. Nobody else has faith like him. I want to be the person that has that amazing faith. And it is a faith believing in Jesus' word, walking in the word, walking with the word. Isn't that powerful? That's all God wants us to do is to trust him. Don't let go of his word. Don't lose faith because it is by hearing his word, I pray today. It is by hearing his word, Romans 10, 17, that we can receive more faith. We all have a measure of faith, but by hearing his word today, I believe with faith that we're going to receive more faith. We all want to have more faith so we can fulfill the promises, the commandments that are on his word. You know, he did say, if you love me, his word says in John, if you love me, you will follow me and you will obey my commandments. If you truly love me, I am the vine and you are the branches. And if you obey by faith in love and in hope, the greatest is love, you will have much fruit. Isn't that powerful? I pray right now that you receive that amazing word. You can do it through Christ, through his word that strengthens you. You have that faith in you. It is being provoked by the testing and the trials. So everything that happens, just receive it. Say, God, I know you have a purpose. God, I know you have a plan. I know this is happening because you're provoking my faith. You're provoking me to pray more. You're provoking me to seek you in your word, to knock at your heart, God. You are provoking me so the manifestation of your glory be released over my life and everyone around me. So I pray today in the powerful name of Jesus, that the Holy Spirit brings a revival in your spirit, in all of us, that he brings that word faith to life and the word love, that we can go through every situation, trusting the word hope, trusting in him, that he is in control, that he is still on his throne and that he's here to bless us. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen.